Hello YouTube, um, this is my second video uh, concerning the um, misconceptions about uh, Zimbabwe. And this time I will be speaking about a very touchy issue, which is uh, the land reform program. And I know there are plenty of um, people who were very much affected in a negative way by this land reform program who are probably watching this video. Um, but uh, first of all, I want to begin by saying that uh, I do apologize for my government and my country and my people for um, acquiring the land in such a violent manner in the year 2001 and two, I believe. Um, but I just want to put um, everything in context, as you probably realized with my previous uh, video of, about democracy in Zimbabwe. I just want to put things in actual context. And um, I'll begin by explaining the fact that um, land reform in Zimbabwe is something that uh, no you know, true, self-respecting, intelligent Zimbabwean will um, claim is, um, is not needed in a country in, in a sense. Um, even in South Africa, they know they need uh, to do a land reform, and it is just accepted. Um, in 1980, when Zimbabwe uh, gained its independence from Great Britain, 70% um, of the arable land um, was owned by uh, a white minority due to the apartheid re regime um, before. And... Um, during the time it was agreed by Britain and Zimbabwe during the signing of the Lancaster House Agreement that um, in a matter of a few years, Zimbabwe would uh, give the white farmers a reprieve, in a sense, to farm on the land uninterrupted. But after this given amount of time, Zimbabwe would begin to take back its land. And um, everything was signed and agreed, and I believe this was... Um, agreed with the Thatcher government and um, time went on uh, everything was nice Zimbabwe was going through uninterrupted economic growth it was uh, a, um, a what is it a uh, model economy uh, for Africa a model democracy according to the British even uh, President Robert Mugabe uh, was knighted by the Queen as Sir Robert Mugabe and you know so many things occurred but in 1997, something great or very negative happened, depending on how you view the situation. Tony Blair was um, elected as the first conserv um, what is it, Labour uh, Prime Minister in a very long time in this country. And when he was elected, uh, the then uh, Secretary of State for Tony Blair wrote a letter to Zimbabwe and said in the letter... Uh, her name was Claire Short. Um, she said that um, she believed that her Labour government didn't have any obligation to carry on funding the land reform program in Zimbabwe. In other words, the Thatcher government of 1980 had accepted that uh, the land distribution situation in Zimbabwe was illegal. And um, they accepted that they needed to pay the remittances to their own uh, you know, white farmers. Uh, as time went on, so it was a willing buyer, willing seller acquisition of land. And um, so Clear Short writes to um, Harare and says, okay, um, we, the Blair government, uh, we are not bound by our, you know, our predecessor, and we believe that we have nothing to do with the agreement that you signed with Thatcher, and therefore we will stop paying the money that um, you said you would um that we first agreed we should pay uh, under the Thatcher government. So uh, three years went on until year 2000 and the Zimbabwean gov government was still in negotiation with Britain uh, to kind of release these funds and Zimbabwe kind of reached a precipice where in a sense the president, whether this was through his intelligence or his lack of intelligence, his initiative or lack of thereof, he then um, ordered that um, due to the fact that we're a sovereign nation, we will not be beholden by the fact that Britain will not release her funds. So what we will then do is um, 
take the land back by force. After all, there is an acceptance that the land is ours. This was the logic of the president. And in 2001, year 2000, 2001 to 2002, um, the forcible eviction of white farmers began. This forcible eviction wasn't just something that was a racist concoction by Mugabe or anything of that sort, but it was something spurred on by this very true uh, thing that occurred uh, between the uh, Labour government and the ZANU-PF government. And when these farm evictions began, I believe that Britain, in all her glory and in all her, her pomp, didn't believe that a country like Zimbabwe would, would stand up and wield its power. And unfortunately for Britain, Zimbabwe did stand up and it, it did roar like a lion. And the whole of the world heard. In actual fact, the whole of Africa stood behind Zimbabwe and said, no, Zimbabwe deserves to take its land back. Since then, Britain has been involved in a very fierce uh, diplomatic war with Zimbabwe, probably the most fierce diplomatic war that Britain has ever fought with any country. And um, this is equivalent to the Cold War uh, between USA and Russia, but the difference is it's a very big country and a very small country. But nonetheless, the point I'm trying to make here is that sometimes we view the land reform as if, oh, this crazy black president called Robert Mugabe, you know, masquerading and taking people's land like a crazy man. But sometimes we don't really look at things in context. Most people have never seen the letter that is actually readily available on the internet. This letter by Claire Short that clearly says that, you know what, we don't care about your land reform program. We have nothing to do with it. Um, this is literally the same as the USA invading Iraq and uh, George Bush promising $20 billion in uh, aid to Iraq over 20 years. But five years later, an Obama government comes in and the Obama government says, oh, we're taking the troops out and we're stopping the funding um, because we're not beholden by what Bush ha said. So therefore, how do you expect the Iraqis to... Um, react and um, this is then the thing that the BBC really doesn't speak about uh, the ABC or whatever television uh, broadcast you watch they never really talk about this but this is something that really happened and um, I just wanted to place it in context but before I finish I will say personally I am pro land reform not only in Zimbabwe but in Venezuela in uh, Brazil and all these countries where Europeans forcibly uh, pushed out the native people. I even believe in uh, land reform in America where reservations need to be extended and the uh, native um, populations need to be given more leverage um, on their economic um, power. But um, after all that is said and done, I still realize that the land reform in Zimbabwe, even though it did occur, it didn't occur in the way that I would have wanted it to occur. And I truly do apologize to the white farmers who lost their land, the black people who died. And again, I will still say that um, as I speak, I do not believe Mugabe is a saint. Mugabe killed over 20,000 Ndebele people in Matebele land in 1985, around then. And Mugabe did Operation Maramba China, which made... 200,000 people homeless and cholera happened, all these different things that Mugabe did that he needs to face up to, maybe at The Hague. But I am the type of person who doesn't have a binary mindset where things either need to be one or two, black or white. I do realize that there are some things that are attributed to Mugabe that really shouldn't be attributed to him. There are some things that we really need to sit down as Zimbabweans and we need to stop self-hating ourselves. And we need to speak the truth as it is that Zimbabwe, even though um, we did the land reform and it wasn't the best thing to be done in the way that it was done, it was still something that needed to be done. And the reason why it was done the way it was done is something that is unreported. Check out my other videos. Um, I will speak about the economy and I will speak about sanctions in my coming video. Thank you.